guys have, 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 have thought about this is, you know, my teacher, Dr. Wong, talks about Wei Qi being associated with Kai with the lung and the spleen in particular. I mean, you guys, you know, Ying Wei, nutritive and defensive. There's this idea that these, these two aspects that are somehow associated with the blood play off each other in a yin and yang way. Ying often said to be, most commonly said to be, inside the blood vessels and Wei is somehow circulating on the outside. And, you know, Wei is defensive qi and, you know, the, the, all the ideas of immunity and the things that we talk about in Chinese medicine. Um, and so his take on it was always, okay, Ying is kind of, uh, you know, they both come from Tai Yin, from the, the, the transformation of food and drink into Ying inside the blood, the core nutritive aspect of the blood, and then Wei. Uh, that travels outside the vessels, but somehow it, it, it's more associated with the lung, and yin is a little more associated with the spleen, and in TCM kind of circles, we see this circulating around a lot. And then you go to this chapter in the Neijing, which is uh, in, the Su, uh, in the Ling Chu, the Yin Wei, Shang Hui uh, chapter, so it's the 18th chapter of the Ling Chu, it says, all right, so the Yellow Emperor says, as he often asks questions, uh, I'd like to hear of the movements of Ying Wei. From where does it come? Actually, the Go thing doesn't work. That's a mistranslation. So, where does Ying Wei come from, is the gist of the question. And so then Qi Bo says, all right, Ying comes from the middle burner, and Wei comes from the lower burner. So right away, that lower burner assertion has my attention. Because the way that I've been learning it, you know, I went to school originally, uh, you know, got my master's, Program. You guys have gone to Ocom around here. I was down in San Francisco at a very TCM based school, AC TCM there. And it was always, you know, Ying Wei is something to do with Wei Qi, has to do with the lung, is what we always hear. But here's the Neijing say it says, saying it comes from the lung. So, uh, believe it or not, somehow this just, I just encountered this about two years ago. So, uh, how many, are you guys all familiar with this assertion in the Neijing that it comes from the lower burner as well? Okay. Yeah, like it, it was that? Uh, and our, and our there, about that. Now, now see here. Now see here's where we try to hopefully get into discussion as opposed to lecture. Um, would you guys say that when you talk about this, that you would hear about it coming from the lower jaw most often, or from the upper jaw most often, or it was more like occasionally it was the lower jaw? Or what, what, what's your all's take on well, it? Where is it from? Is different than it's moving it. Like, so I don't right. know if we ever talk about where it's from, but where it, but what's but the lung we talk about is being related to the way she. So I think right. I always think of, I always, we were always taught to think of lung, I think, in terms of hands. Right. Right. But I don't know that we ever talk about where it originates from. Right. Which I guess, at least in this one quote, and as you guys know, or may know, the, the Neijing contradicts itself all over the place in these different threads. So it's very possible that it's different threads. But well, Yes. It makes sense that, that, I mean, at least from a Qigong standpoint, that the Wei Qi would come from the low jaw because that's what you're trying to cultivate in Qigong is you're trying to control the low dantian, and that's where the power comes from, which is also the protective power. Okay. Isn't it interesting, too, that now uh, Western medicine says that most of our um, immunity comes from the small intestine? Yeah, from the gut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the intestine thing, as we'll see in a minute, some of these later quotes, is actually a big part of that discussion. Um, so, yeah, so in any case, I, we, maybe we can all move forward and agree that most commonly you hear about the lung, right? Or you certainly hear some kind of upper jaw thing in the way she... And, and, that, and that could very well... I mean, actually, if we look forward in these few quotes, we'll talk a bit more. So, the very next line, I mean the very next character after that last thing, is this question again from the Yellow Emperor. So he says, all right, you know, Ying come, or Chi Bo says, Ying comes from middle burner, Wei comes from lower burner. Next question. All right, so from where does the Sanjiao uh, see, emerge? Yeah, so where does the San, from where does the Sanjiao emerge? And then Chi Bo, you know, says, okay, the upper jaw, and it immediately goes into upper jaw. That's the, the first thing, is that it just starts with the upper jaw emerges from the upper aspect of the stomach, or literally the mouth of the stomach, goes up through the throat, links, you know, linking also through the diaphragm, and then spreads in the chest. So the very next thing after this, you know, discussion about yin and wei, which tantalizingly doesn't really go into any more detail, immediately asks a question about the sanjia. So as usual with the Neijing, the context and the order of discussion in itself implies certain meaning. And so it, it is of note that the very next thing that Neijing says is, all right, 
What about the Sanjay? So there's some, and, and as you'll see, the, the order that I put these quotes starts to build some of these arguments as well. So the Sanja is the next thing to, to bring up, and again, it starts with the upper jaw. What, you know, this little paragraph afterwards. What is interesting is that um, it doesn't talk about the other burners. The, the, the uh, very next lines don't go through the middle jaw where that emerges, the lower jaw where that emerges. It just kind of goes to the upper jaw, and then it talks about the circuits. Uh, which in itself is a, another subject of debate about what that means, but it talks about 25 circuits of yin, 25 circuits of yang, starting with yang ming and ending up in the tai yin mong. So back in the upper jaw again. So that whole second, or the question that follows, in other words, this constructive defensive question, is a question of yang jiao, which has a very upper jaw focus. So that those two lines then. Um, have led to a lot of debate. You know, there's, you can get these books in, in China that have like a quote, and then like all the debates about that. And um, this is one of those things that is debated a lot. And in fact, you know, just in preparing for this briefly yesterday, I kind of was looking online, and there's there's a website for the Hebei Zhongyi uh, uh, Dashia, the Hebei Hebei Chinese Medicine University, and there's like a you know web talking group, and they're talking. There's one string where they're talking about this. And they quoted this article uh, from the Beijing uh, Chinese Medicine University Journal or something, I have it cited here, where they start to break this down. And the guy who wrote the article comes hard down on me. It's from the upper jaw camp. And so, <clears throat> and I'm borrowing some of the discussion from that article in this next little section here. He kind of says, all right, the lower jaw camp is a earlier trend in Chinese medicine, which was somehow subsumed later in experience. That was the gist of his argument. And he said, you know, the great advocate of the lower jiao, besides the Neijing and the Jai, the Jai Jing, by the way, which is the systematic classic, you know, a few years later, also says defensive qi comes from the lower jiao. So those two classical texts describe it as coming from the lower jiao. But then uh, the uh, Lei Jing, which is the, uh, what's it called, the classified classic is how it's often translated by uh, Zhang Jianbin. Basically, he takes the Lei Jing and puts it all in all these sections, and I'm sorry, he takes the Nei Jing and puts it in all these interesting sections based on subject matter. He seems to agree with the Lower Jiao group, and he's writing in the Ming Dynasty, so pretty recently. And he kind of explains why he thinks the Lower Jiao is where Wei Ji comes from. And I, I translated his little comment, and it's a very rough, loose translation, but basically I'll read it as we go here. That's, that's quote number three. The root of a person is basically qi and qi. Qi is a yang thing, and yang must arise from yin. Jing, not, not jing, we're not talking about yin and wei. Jing is a yin thing and must arise from yang. So he just kind of just basically says, qi and jing are what people are made of. You know, that's the more physical aspect of our existence, is both qi and jing. You know, I guess in contrast to shun, to shun which is even harder to perceive. And so, anyway, jing is yin, and qi is a yang thing. And the yin thing must come from yang, and the yin must come from yin. So he kind of takes that and then says, all right, now if we're going to talk about yin and wei, yin and wei are both, yin is a yin thing, and wei is a yang thing. So if we say that, then yin being a yin thing, you know, constructive, being a yin thing must come from the lung of yang place, and then kind of descend downwards. And defensive qi being a very uh, yang thing, the defensive nature of our bodies, has to be rooted in a very yin place like the kidney and then come up. And so that's the summary of, of his argument as he reads the Neijing. This is writing in the Ming Dynasty. So this is, you know, he's obviously an extremely well respected commentator on the classics, and this is his take. <laughs> um, and then, you know, this this you know there this this article also discussed, as we have maybe seen, and even as maybe Jonathan's mentioning. There's the idea of strengthening Wei Qi certainly can be tied into strengthening the kidneys. I mean, clinically, we've all maybe seen this as a viable approach. You know, chronic deficiency, the person has uh, lots of kidney deficiency signs and, of course, has defi depleted uh, immunity or Wei Qi or however you want to talk about it. On the other hand, this, uh, this article, and again, I'm just kind of summarizing a current discussion in Chinese, you know, uh, school uh, websites. 
is saying, all right, but then there's also a strong argument for this upper gel. And here, I kind of broke it down, summarized a lot, of, a lot of pages into these four little bullet points here. The one is, that, and you see this, this is, you guys see where I am on here? All right. Um, there are many chapters in the Neijing which also talk about something yang that comes from the upper jiao, and they warn the soli, the interstices. So that must be talking about wei qi coming from the upper jiao. That's one of the ways they kind of say it. It's coming from the upper jiao. Another is this line, um, it's this idea that that line right after it, in the Neijing itself, talks about the upper jiao, and then talks about all these circuits which end up in the lung. So there must be an implication just by the very structure of the Neijing itself which is saying, whatever the heck it meant by Wei Qi coming from the lower jiao, it still somehow begins in the middle jiao. That's, that's the track of the, those who argue the upper jiao may take. Um, and then another is that maybe, you know, obviously the Neijing, you know, the, the, the version of the inner classic, the Neijing that we have now is actually from like the Song Dynasty. So maybe in the you know, 800 years before the version we have was collected, someone just, you know, the character for Xiang, upper and xia is extremely similar, maybe they just wrote it wrong. Although it would be a weird sentence, I guess. Yin comes from the middle bird, and Wei comes from the upper bird. Yeah, so maybe that was what it was saying, and the xiang and xia just got flipped. Which I guess, there's no way you'll ever know the answer to that question. And then of course, modern clinical experience, you know, there's formulas like Yu Ping Feng San, we think of as having an effect on the lung and the spleen in particular, but somehow upper. Um, work for tongue and what we think of as Wei Qi. So, that's the gist of, of, that's the gist of kind of where I stand, what I, where I stand on just presenting the general discussion.